Welcome to the CEB Candidate Interviews. I'm here today with James Kelkors. Good evening. Nice to nice have to you here. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. So we'll get right into the questions. So what do you see as the reason or reasons for lower local aid? And local aid covers Chapter 70s and 90s in addition to unrestricted local aid. And what exactly are you going to do to change that? Well, I think first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lobby harder to get more of your state tax dollars back to the district. So Newburyport, Salisbury, and Amesbury, with me in the House as the next state representative, is surely going to benefit from getting an increase in local aid. And I think that's what's going to th it's going to take an effective leader such as myself to just lobby harder for those monies to come back. How do you plan on addressing Chapter 70 school funding issue in the district, including the unfunded mandates? Chapter 70 is a complex formula that needs to be addressed. It needs to be revisited, and a lot of folks within the district have formed groups uh, that have gotten together, who have been discussing the issue, coming up with creative ways in which to uh, help uh, get Newburyport, Salisbury, and Amesbury its fair share uh, of the Chapter 70 proceeds. I think one of the ways is to address unfunded mandates right off the, bu uh, right off the bat. Um, special education, busing for uh, IEP students, indiv indiv individualized education plan uh, students. For instance, in Amesbury we have 39 of those students, uh, cost $500,000 uh, to bus out of district. I think we need to look at creative ways in which uh, to lower that cost if we don't get that amount fully reimbursed that was cut from the budget back in two thousand the state budget back in two thousand four so i think what we can do is we can look at creative ways such as maybe regionalizing um, newburyport salisbury and amesbury are very close together uh... potentially we can look at you know sharing that cost uh... so as to lessen the impact um, on the on the residents of this district, the property taxpayers who have to foot the bill for that cost. Another another thing we can do is we can look at getting that chapter the the lottery aid back to help um, with the un with the non chapter seventy portion of the local aid, so as to lessen the impact on the property taxpayers. Back in the 1970s, the lottery was established to help uh, cities and towns such as Newburyport, Salisbury, and Amesbury um, with, the, with, with the tab of their municipal budgets. Uh, not all of that money is coming back. Uh, so I want to argue for more of that money coming back. And more, other money such as regional, there was incentives to regionalize back in the 1970s. So school systems like the Triton Regional School System uh, were promised to get uh, one hundred percent of their busing costs, for instance, are reimbursed. The Triton school system is not getting one hundred percent reimbursement for their busing costs. So that's more money right there that your state representative uh, will be able to argue back for, so uh, argue more money for. Um, so those coupled with the un unfunded mandates are examples how we can help uh, fund the unfunded portion of Chapter 70 and uh, get more money back for Chapter 70. How can you influence the process so that Chapter 90 funding, that's for the roads, gets to the communities in a timely manner so that the funds can be used during construction season? So Chapter 90 monies are going to have to be released such that we're, we're able to get that, again, I mean like local aid, like Chapter 70, you need somebody who's at the State House saying, look, my district is not getting its fair share. So Chapter 90 money is, is money, again, like you said, set aside for the roads that we're going to need somebody in the State House who's going to say, you know what, I've got Low Street that needs uh, repair. I have Warren Avenue in Amesbury that needs repair. I have some uh, a road such as Kimball Road in Amesbury that's pretty beat up. Can you bring back some more of those monies uh, to help us? Because we just don't have sufficient funds in our Chapter 90 allotment already uh, to be able to you know, spend on our roads. So uh, we need more of those funds back. And that's all coming in the form of local aid, uh, the non-Chapter 70 portion of it, a large portion of which can be allotted to, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be set aside for education, for instance, and it can go on to uh, areas such as uh, road repair. What issues do you see crossing the aisle to accomplish? Uh, I think we just need to work together on the State House. I mean, first of all, we need, we need balance. Um, 
and, and, and without enough Republicans in the State House, there's just obviously no balance. So crossing the issues to work in the best interest of the district is what I'm going to be good at. If it's good for the district, I'm going to vote for it. If it's good for the Democratic Party, I'll vote for it as Republican. If it's good for the Republican Party, I'm going to vote for it. But ultimately, as I said earlier, if it's good for the district, I'm going to vote for it. Do you support the repeal of the automatic gas tax increases? Absolutely. Why or why not? Absolutely. Because the legislature should take a vote on that. Uh, that shouldn't just be indexed with inflation or the consumer price index. That's something that the, the people of the district, the people of Massachusetts, the people of our country elect leaders to make tough decisions like that. If we need more money, then we should say, uh, you know, we'll bring it up and have a vote in session about it. But it shouldn't be something that we just escape having a vote on and just let rise with the rate of inflation or the rate the consumer price index. So it's something we should have to take as legislators a vote on. How would you as our state representative handle issues that have joint jurisdictions such as the Salisbury Beach Improvement Projects or the landfill in Newburyport? Well, I'll tell you, I'm going to work with the folks of Salisbury to make sure that we replenish the beach properly. Uh, Salisbury Beach needs to pay attention to. I think that's an economic engine over there, and that's part of my three top priorities, economic development. I think we really need to take advantage of Salisbury Beach and harness that value that we have over there, that beauty that we have over there. I think it's a treasure, and it's great for this district. Um, in regards to the landfill, uh, I'm going to be working closely with Mayor Donna Holliday on making sure that it gets capped and that New Ventures properly follows through with their obligation to the citizens of Newburyport to make sure that they follow through with that duty of making sure that's capped uh, and, and doing what they're obliged to do. How do you plan on ensuring that you bring transparency to Massachusetts? I think it's simple and that's just electing somebody from another party. Uh, out of 160, I think there's about 30 of us that are Republicans, or will be 30 of us that are Republicans. Um, so I think we need to just elect those from the Republican Party, so as to you know add some balance to the state house and, and work for the best interests of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, not just the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but also the citizens of this district, most importantly. The proliferation of drugs in our areas and throughout the Commonwealth has become a huge issue, along with drug overdosing. What do you think the root cause or root causes are of the problem? And what specific steps do you propose to address this growing problem? Not enough treatment and we need treatment. So I think the, the, the uh, root cause of the problem is we need treatment and, and there's, we need to really uh, prosecute those who are dealing drugs. Um, but we also need you know, folks that, who have a problem, who have an affliction, who have an addiction with this very serious uh, drug, uh, you know, whether it be heroin or any other type of opiate or pills, um, they need the treatment uh, that we should be providing to them. So I think treatment can solve the problem. I'm looking forward to working with Sheriff Cousins. Uh, I know that he's done a, a great job uh, going after that issue and, and, and working with others uh, within the legislature, within the executive branch at taking care of that problem that we have here in Massachusetts. Uh, education goes right back to my top priority of education in the district. Um, that being my, my most important to goal, to make sure that every child has an excellent education, but not at the cost of the property taxpayer uh, returning local aid. If we provide the education, we keep kids in programs, both after school programs, we divert them, or we divert you know, as many as possible away from you know, opiate use and other types of drug use. Uh, I think we're gonna be successful in achieving the, the, the issue that we have uh, of a drug problem here in the district. But treatment is really, those afflicted with the addiction need treatment. We need to provide that to them. Do you support the House approved legislation to provide in-state tuition to illegal immigrants or those who are undocumented? Why or why not? No, I don't. I think it's important that we provide our kids here with the very best in education. Look, we have uh, six-tenths of one percent is the amount of local aid that the district receives or that the state has dropped the amount of local aid reimbursement to. And revenues have increased 11 percent since 2008, since the sales tax been increased from 5 percent to 6.25 percent. And we still have a local aid issue. We're not able to provide our children uh, with arts and foreign languages in some of the schools at some of the levels of our public schools. So I'm if- gonna I'm gonna cut you here for a minute. 
Jerry, this question needs to be redone. Okay. The reason why is because you're not answering the question. I'm saying in-state tuition, colleges, not Chapter 70 local schools. You said, yeah, so I said we have an issue, and that issue is local aid. We need more local aid. Why are we giving it away to other people? You didn't let me finish answering okay, your question. I'm, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just that it didn't, so it, well <laughs> it, it seemed to me that it wasn't answering the question, that it was talking more about, okay, my apologies, I'll shut up. I will. Do you support the House approved legislation to provide in state tuition to illegal immigrants or to those who are undocumented? Why or why not? No, I do not. And the reason that I don't is because we have a local aid issue. Okay? We need to support those living here in our district, okay, those children of ours that are, are lacking foreign language at the middle school and high school levels that are lacking the arts and other extracurricular activities that they deserve, that we as taxpayers are working hard to provide for our children. And to add another obligation by saying we're going to provide uh, tuition to uh, those that are either undocumented or um, you know, haven't been here legally, however you want to couch it, I just don't think is proper for us to do. We don't have a big enough pot of money as it is. We need to first provide for those uh, children of ours who desperately need that education. I'm here to lo ar argue for more local aid for our district, and this is, I think, a means of giving it more away uh, to programs that we just can't afford right now. So, uh, no, I do not support that. Do you or do you not support show ID to vote? Why or why not? You know, I don't really think it's an issue here in our district. Um, I think it would be, you know, maybe in some of the other uh, cities and towns throughout the Commonwealth um, that are having a problem with it. I just don't see it as being a problem in Newburyport, Salisbury, and Amesbury. So it's not at the top of my list at this moment. But if it does come up for a debate, and there's evidence that it seriously is a problem throughout you know, some other cities and towns, I think we're going to have to address it as a whole. And it's something that I'm obviously going to keep an open mind to. But right now, here in our district, I don't think that's the biggest issue. I think the biggest issue, again, is local aid, is Chapter 70. I, mean, I think those are the, the issues as a, as, a, as a state representative that need to be addressed and tackled. In the aftermath of the verdict of July 25th with the Commissioner of the Probation Department, who was convicted of providing illegal gratuities to members of the legislature. In your opinion, what should the legislature do to ensure that no other agency has a rigged hiring system? You know, again, it goes back to your, your question about transparency. I think you need to add, you know, folks to the legislature that have a different perspective, that aren't from the same party. Um, it creates fair, open, transparent government. Uh, government by the people, government for the people. Uh, and I think that's the start. By electing new people with new blood, with fresh ideas, with different perspectives from opposing parties who uh, don't necessarily, aren't necessarily disagreeable, uh, but you know, they're, they're, they're looking for the same objective of all the folks in our district who want what's best for the district, uh, but you know, they are obviously going to ask tough questions uh, that are going to protect things like that from happening or prevent, rather, things like that from happening again. And this concludes our interview. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your much. time. I appreciate it. I really appreciate you having, here, having me here. Thank you, Mrs. Mullins. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you.